Hey there, it's Thursday morning and you are no doubt hopefully finishing what has been a great work week and hopefully you are finishing the week strong like the hair that we talked about on Monday rather than finishing like the tortoise. And I want to just leave you with a word that will help maybe finish the week strong. In the ancient timeless words of Jesus from Scripture, more specifically his Sermon on the Mount, we find this statement where he says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger and thirst. Thirst is one of the most powerful metaphors in all of the scripture. Most of us don't really know what it means to be really hungry or really thirsty. When we think of hunger, we think of that feeling uh, about 10, 11 o'clock in the morning on days where we had to skip breakfast because we were running a little bit behind. We're not associated with what it feels like to go two uh, or more weeks without food. Thirst to us is when the waiter is taking a little extra time than he should or she should uh, in refilling our drinks at the restaurant. We're really not familiar with going for two days without any kind of of any kind of liquid or drink. So that, my friends, is what we would really call thirsty. But in a spiritual sense, that's the kind of hunger and thirst that Jesus is referring to. His words that he used in this verse are the strongest that can be employed to describe hunger and more specifically to describe thirst. And here's why. Hunger and thirst have a way of changing perspective. When we are hungry and thirsty that the, in the way that Jesus is describing, it can change our perspective and it can change our priorities. In 1996, a young Marine corporal named Joey Mora was standing on the platform of an aircraft carrier. He was patrolling uh, the Iranian Sea and incredibly, he fell off the carrier. His absence was unknown for 36 hours. And of course, when they discovered this, they instituted a search and rescue mission, but they called it off after about 24 hours because it was presumed that no one could survive in the sea over 60 hours, especially without a life jacket. His parents were even notified that he was missing and presumed dead. Now, the rest of the story is one of those truth is stranger than fiction events. Script writers probably wouldn't pick it up because it just seems so unbelievable. Four Pakistani fishermen found Joey about 72 hours after he had fallen from that aircraft carrier. He was treading water in his sleep. He was clinging to a makeshift flotation device that he had learned in his military training using his pants. He was delirious, as you can imagine, when they pulled him out of the water. Uh, his tongue was dry and cracked. His throat was parched. About two years later, as he spoke with Stone Phillips from Dateline NBC, he recounted an unbelievable story of his will to live and his will to survive. In his words, he said it was God who kept him struggling to survive. And he was discovered by these fishermen. But the most excruciating thing of all, Joey would account, is the one thought he said that took over his body and his mind was his desperation just for a drink of water, even though he was surrounded by water. When Jesus speaks of hunger and thirst, he's referring not to a, a casual desire, but to Joey's type of desperation for a drink of water. He's, it's like a starving person desiring food and someone perishing for want of water. This is the kind of hunger and the thirst that comes from desperation. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let me leave you with this. What does Jesus mean by righteousness? Well, the word that he uses in this text can be a couple of meanings. The first definition, the most simple, is just simply referring to right living or living rightly. The second meaning, though, is the one that I want to just mention quickly. It's the Greek word for righteousness that Jesus uses here has to do with more than just doing the right thing, but it actually has to do and rather emphasizes having a right relationship. We, we should be intensely longing for a relationship with Jesus. 
the reality is that as long as we see our relationship with just an oblig as an obligation or just doing the right thing because there's a certain sense of duty that that is accompanied with relationship with Christ we'll never find the satisfaction that is promised in that verse Jesus doesn't just want right living he also desires right relationship Jesus is saying if you want to be satisfied if you want to be filled and that word filled means stuff to the point of contentment if that's what you want then you have to passionately and intensely above anything else long for or thirst for a right relationship with me don't fill your life with substitutes fill your life with spiritual things and when you do you'll start longing for him you'll look forward to uh, with excitement and anticipation to that moment of prayer that time of devotion and so, at the risk of sounding really carnal in the midst of talking about these spiritual things, let me just leave you with these words. Stay thirsty, my friends.